Welcome, everybody. Today's video is called Is Jesus' Second Coming Connected to the Year 2047? Praise be to God. Now I can hear um, people, objections, uh, um, calling up Mark 13, verse 32, where um, Jesus uh, uh, says that no man knows the hour or the day the Son of Man um, shall return, only the Father. Remember when you're studying the Word of God, um, you must always like, I've, I've, I've taught before, um, divide it. Like the animals that alone were allowed to be eaten was those that had divided hoofs and that chewed the card, meaning that, that your attitude to the words of God is you must divide it. Okay, look at the words very carefully that Jesus says. If you don't study the word rightly dividing the word of truth, you'll miss out many mysteries that Christ has put there for us. Okay, so let's look at what Jesus says. No man knows the hour or the day the Son of Man returns. Uh, the year 2047 is not an hour nor a day. Isaiah 61, um, it says this, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He's anointed me to preach the gospel, etc., etc., and to proclaim, listen, the acceptable year of the Lord, not the month, the day, or the hour, but the acceptable year. Like Isaiah 38 um, and 1 Kings chapter 20, when Isaiah is telling Hezekiah of his death, he gives him 15 years. So to the year he tells him his death, he does not tell him the acceptable hour or the day, the acceptable year that he should Die, praise be to God. So, amen. I'm not um, breaking the law of Scripture by bringing in the year, even if you don't agree with what's being said. I'm not breaking the law of Scripture by bringing in the acceptable year. In fact, um, it's fulfilling Scripture in Isaiah 61. Now, people will bring up Acts chapter 1, where Jesus says, when the disciples were asking about the end, Jesus said, It is not for you to know um, the seasons, for it's in uh, the Father's uh, um, authority. Well, remember Daniel in Daniel chapter 11, verse 35 and 36. Uh, Jesus, the angel, sorry, tells Daniel that many men shall get the times of the last days wrong. Many wise men. Why? Because it will not be the time yet. It is not the end time. Jesus was telling them in Acts 1, you this is won't help you at all. This is more applicable to those who will be alive when it is the end. A time that it says in Jeremiah chapter um, 30, uh, Daniel chapter 12, uh, verse 1 and 2, it says, the end time will be worse than any time ever before there shall be none like it. So God is revealing the mystery of the acceptable year, not hour or day, to all those who are alive at that appointed time. Like God says to Isaiah 45 verse 3, I will reveal to you the secret treasures of darkness. Isaiah 60, 46 verse um, 10, I believe, God said, desire, I am he that declares the end from the beginning. So clearly God has a desire to reveal to us the end. Well, even when you know the seven years tribulation begins, well, then you're going to know um, more or less when the acceptable year is, but not the hour or the day, as people have prophesied before. So, that's more or less the introduction from it. And I hope that your minds rest to, to come joining with me now through the scripture. 
as we remember, do not offend the scripture and uh, ever hesitate to bring to you the hour or the day. But we're looking at the acceptable year. So let's look at the scripture and see if the year 2047, remember these three numbers, 247, 247, and to see if God is trying from the very beginning, remember he said, I am he that declares the end from the beginning, trying to capture our attention. Genesis, the beginning, the very, very beginning. God decides to make two great lights, the sun and the moon, the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. And everything will be governed from these two, there's two great lights. So then he made four seasons that are governed by these two lights. Uh, <clears throat> winter, spring, summer, and autumn. Um, there's your four. And then God did it all in seven days. So there we see 247 right at the very beginning of creation. Now we're going to go at another major, major event but now is the destruction of all creation. And see if 247 again pops up its beautiful head. God decides to destroy man and all the animals. And it begins on the second month, the seventh day. And it rains 40 days and nights. So there we see again... 247 rises its head at now a major event. The second month, the seventh day, it rained 40 days and nights. And that's the numbers God chooses to now destroy the earth. Uh, unlike the numbers he chose when he began to make the two great lights, the four seasons and the seven days. Okay, now let's look at the beginning again, we're still in Genesis, the beginning of Judaism, okay, where Judaism begins and God is going to bless all the nations through one man, Abraham. Abraham is born in the year 1947. The covenant of the circumcision where God is now going to begin the Jewish nation because he begins it with the law of the circumcision. If you're not circumcised, you can't eat the Passover. You can't be saved uh, and you're not a Jew. It begins <coughs> with circumcision. And Moses was, uh, sorry, Abraham was circumcised. Remember this words? 2047. Wow. So again now, 247 <coughs> rises its head. Judaism begins in the year 2047. How does that relate to us today? Remember, Abraham was born in 1947, and he circumcised in 2047, 100 years later. Israel got its nation back in 1947. And when will the 100th birthday be? 2047. Is that the year of their true circumcision? Where Israel will no longer be hidden, but at the coming of the Messiah, they will at last be ready to be revealed to the world, truly circumcised. Israel's getting its nation back in 1947 matched exactly Abraham's birth, and Abraham's circumcision in 2047 matches exactly the 100th birthday that Israel will be. 100 years after getting its nation back again, where they will now be ready for circumcision. Very unusual coincidence. Again, popping his head. Let's look at the last one in Genesis. When it te In Genesis 40, 9 and 50, we see the only two people in the whole of the Bible ever to be embalmed was Jacob and Joseph. Now, embalm means that you cannot be corrupted. You stay <clears throat> maintained without corruption, preserved. And the only two men, and um, so you have the only two people ever to be circumcised, I'm um, sorry, to be embalmed. 
is Jacob and Joseph. The, the embalming takes 40 days. There's your four. And the mourning lasts 70 days. So there you have again. Genesis chooses to close with two, four, seven. Amen. With the only two embalmings of all time. Again, um, very unusual. God choosing to end Genesis with two, four, seven. Now remember, uh, the, 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 the um, title of this video is the year 2047 connected with the second coming of Jesus. And there we see from the book of Genesis, right from the beginning and all the way through to Noah's flood and to Abraham's birth and circumcision to the events we have to Israel today on to the close of Genesis with the two embalms of the only people ever to be embalmed. Clearly, the numbers two, four, seven, hold these things together. Now remember, God said, I will reveal to you the secret treasures of darkness that don't relate to the hour or the day, but the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, open the eyes of the blind, set the captives free, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now let's go into Exodus. And now we go into the most important, powerful events of all time. God gives the Ten Commandments. The Jews say the whole of the Torah was given at Mount Sinai. And let us look at what happens. Moses has to go up two times to receive it because it gets smashed on the first time over the incident with the golden calf. So he has to go two times to receive it. There's your two, okay? Then he has to go and fast 40 days and nights two times, okay? But God will not come down his presence upon Moses until he's finished seven days fasting. And then God finishes with him. And that was the basis where the Ten Commandments and the Torah was given to the Jewish people to light up the whole world. Twice, 40 days, and seven days until the Prince of God rested upon him. Again, two, four, seven. And in the book of Numbers, we see, amen, all the tribes of Israel, when they become one, and they all bring the offerings to God. God accepts the offerings from Israel in Numbers chapter 7. But the total amount of shekels come up to 2,000, 4, and over 7 days. Again, you see 2, 4, 7. God accepts the offering of Israel. Again, pointing to the end day. That God will accept Israel, completely return to him in 2047. Now, let us go on to complete the, the Torah, the five books of the Bible. The Jewish people, in fact, the whole message of the Bible, the Jewish people go into three exiles. Okay, when they're exiled, from, amen, from the promised land. They were on their way to the promised land after Egypt with Moses. But because they sinned and didn't believe the witnesses, Caleb and Joshua, what God did now, punished them. But they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. So there's your four. Okay. The second exile was when um, Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed the temple and took them into exile for 70 years. So we have the 40, the first, and the 70, the second. So now we're looking for a two. The third major exile was uh, in the Romans' times when the second temple is destroyed. And remember, 
Therefore, the Israelites are cast into exile for how long? 2,000 years. So there we see the longest is 2,000 years. And then we have 40 years in the wilderness and then 70 years in um, Babylon. 2,047. Pointing to the end forever of all the exiles. God could have chosen any number for the three exiles, but he specifically chose two, four, and seven again. Is that the Lord Jesus, uh, amen, uh, um, trying to lead us and to guide us into the anointing, the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to help us understand what the acceptable year of his return is. And remember, I didn't ever say the day neither the hour, praise be to God. Okay, so um, let us now delve into outside of the five books. We're going into Joshua now. But remember, Israel is going into the promised land. Remember that. This is like a, a shadow pointing to the end. Just before the church enter the promised land, that's the second coming. Here's what happens to Joshua in Joshua chapter 5 and Joshua 6. Joshua has to take all of Israel that was not circumcised because in the wilderness there was no circumcision happening. So all those who left um, Egypt uh, that, that, um, um, sorry, that were born in the wilderness, none of them that were born in the wilderness had been circumcised. So there was a million of them that needed to be circumcised and so Joshua does it in Joshua chapter 5. So it's the second circumcision to Israel um, and, um, um, that was repeated after Abraham gave the command. Israel ceased from circumcision for 40 years. And so it began its second circumcision momentum again here in Joshua chapter 5. So there's your two. Amen. Now he has 40,000 men he takes with him to march round Jericho. How many days? Seven. So there you have the three connect. The circumcision repeats itself again to Israel the second time after 40 years being forbidden by God. Okay, so the circumcision momentum begins again at the hand of Joshua. Then Joshua, after that done, he takes 40,000 men to go and march around Jericho, and he does it seven times. And then the walls come tumbling down, which is pointing to the end times. At the end times, the walls will come tumbling down. Two, four, seven. That is the, the most that we can have. God gives us 24 hours, seven days a week. That was the maximum. And even in that was pointing to the mystery concerning the acceptable year of the Lord. Praise be to God. It's exciting. Amen. So again, every major event we've had from Genesis all the way here, we can see God. Amen. Has chosen two, four, seven to talk to us. Now we have King David's biggest ever mistake that has kind of baffled many rabbis that just because he numbers Israel and if he's moved to number Israel for some strange reason and he numbers Israel, could this be pointing to God trying to give us the clue to the number concerning the last days? So he numbers and here's the, what he counts Israel. One million... 100,000, there's one and one, makes two. Then 47,000. So there you have the two and the 47 again. And God gets so angry that then he kills how many? 70,000 Israelites. So you have two, 47,000 and seven. Again, the numbers that come up in David's very unusual mistake that he makes. And then David goes on in 1 Chronicles 19 
to fight his last ever battle, which he kills 47,000. God again wants us to have that number in our mind, 47. And when it comes to David, of course, Jesus comes from that bloodline. And Jacob also died at 147. Again, God wants us to be aware of that number. And that's it. Now, there'll be many other things as you journey through the Torah. But God just wanted you to see right from the beginning, from the creation of the two lights, the four seasons, and the making of the, the earth in seven days, in which he rested, unto the flood of Noah, unto the two embalmings, unto the birth of Abraham, and to the circumcision. 2047 runs through all of these wave, um, um, events, all the way to the giving of the Torah. And two times he does it, 40 days and nights, and seven days each time he has to wait for the anointing to come down. Amen. All God doing is trying to trigger off our minds subliminally. Amen. To understand the mystery of the year 2046, which if you watch my video called The True Identity of the Antichrist Revealed by Rabbi Elijah Michaels, you see the timing of it. It's all pointing to the year 2046. Seven. <clears throat> Amen. Praise be to God. Now, I could tell you more, but I think it would be too much. That's enough for you to digest. And remember, be like the cow that eats the grass, chews the cud, swallow, bring it back up again. Swallow, bring it back up again. Don't be like people that they 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 see something, they chew it, swallow it. And that said, these were the animals that they were not allowed to eat. They could only eat animals that chewed and swallowed and brought up and chewed and swallowed. Brought up and chewed. Chew these scriptures. Chew these things that I've given you. And in doing that, meditate upon them. And the Holy Spirit from that, amen, can use them to trigger your mind to be enlightened to the deep secret treasures that God promised to share with us in Isaiah 45, verses 3. Praise be to God. Amen. Remember, is the second coming of Christ connected to the acceptable year of 2047? One thing I know, brothers and sisters, amen, amen, God said to Daniel, seal up these things until the end. This is the end. So God, I believe, is unsealing these seals for you to have a look into. Praise be to God. Remember, Jesus loves you. And prepare yourselves for the coming of the Lord.